Okay, we just finished up the second directory, Ajax. We're going to move on to the third directory, Ajax2, and we'll open up index.html. Okay, in this example, we still have our quote system, but I want to show you the different states of the server. So we talked about 0 through 4, and we checked to see if the ready state is equal to 4. I want to run this app and show you what it looks like when the server is processing our AJAX request. Okay, so the only thing that you need to add is this clear states function call at the beginning of the update info function. So if I scroll down, you'll see I have the quote service. They're going to click on a button. It's going to call update info with the specific quote ID. I'll come to update info and I'll clear the states. So I'm going to clear the specific states. Let me show you what it looks like. I'll open up this one. So I'm going to clear these boxes down here. Then I'm going to create the object, set, set up what happens when I return. But in this case, I'm going to print the ready states. I'm going to print the ready states in the states object. But once it equals 4 and the server is equal to 200, then I'll output the final result in the info box, just like we did before. I still make the get request and send the, uh, send the AJAX request. Okay, and if I open up the server, server is the same. Make sure you update the code on the server. Open up the PHP server code. You see it's the same, but I'm sleeping for three seconds. That way you can see the different states of the server. So let's run this. If I refresh, click on quote one. Okay, you'll see the server was, the request was not initialized. When I open the request, you'll see server connection established. And then I sent the request. So I did a send. Okay, request will be received. Once the request is received, okay, we're going to wait three seconds, so it's going to process the request. After three seconds, we're going to choose which string and send it back. So if I clear it, click on another one. Okay, you'll see I open the request. When I send the request, it sleeps for three seconds. After three seconds, it will receive the request. So the sleep happens first. And then I get the next one. So three seconds, I stop sleeping, I receive the request, process it, send back the string, and then you'll rec receive that number four. Once you see the number four, response is ready, now I can update the user interface. So I could do a sleep in other parts of the code. So maybe I get my get request, and right before I send the request, maybe I do a sleep here for let's say two seconds. Okay, let's see what happens. So I update the code, do a refresh, click on it. One, two, three, one, two. Okay, so the sleep happens first, no matter where it's placed. When the request is received, processing the request, request is finished, that's happening on the server side so we wanted to get these individual codes we could, but the front end doesn't receive until the request is finished. Okay, once the request is finished, then I can update the user interface with the response text. So it doesn't really matter where you put the sleep because these other codes will be only accessible on the server. Once I get a status code four back, then of course the other ones, request to receive, processing request has been finished. Okay, so that's why you see that happening there. But this proves that it's important to wait for the status code 4, which means the request is ready, as well as waiting for the 200 code, which means everything's okay, that the server didn't crash, that the code worked well, that we're able to generate the response, and now we've received the response, response is ready, now we can receive the response and update the user interface. Okay, please continue to the next video and we'll move to the next coding example.